Today we're using Dollar Tree wire pumpkin wreath forms. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Taking this familiar Dollar Tree wreath form. This is a pumpkin. I have done many projects with this. I'm going to take a infinity scarf which I got from a thrift store. Never used it because it's hot in Alabama. I'm going to use the other tag and a variety of ribbons. We're going to add some blue today guys. Look at these white sunflowers. Gorgeous. Choose some greenery that you like. Anything that's going to coordinate with your ribbons is kind of what I go by. Some orange hydrangea. Some, look at these, I love these pigs. Witch hazel bush. This is the first time I've ever seen them. And then other little pieces like sedums or whatever. We're going to take some heirloom white and I'm going to spray paint this frame. While it's drying, I'm going to thread my needle with a little bit of this cotton thread and an upholstery needle. Just like you would a regular needle. Okay, once the frame is dry, you don't have to paint the back. We're going to start laying this on the top. Now the reason we paint it is because I don't want black showing through my white scarf. If anything shows, I want it to be the same color so it kind of blends in together. Now I am going to just start by laying this down. I'm not going to cut anything on this project. So, you know, if you feel comfortable cutting this and thinking that it won't unravel, then that is totally fine. Um, you can do whatever you would like. You know, you can also use an old sweater to do this if you find something at thrift store or something that you're not using anymore. Maybe you got a coffee stain somewhere on the sweater. You could cut it up and use the chest piece to go over your wreath. So I'm just going to start tacking it down. I don't want to pull anything tight because I don't want the ribs underneath to uh, be very pronounced. So the ribs, what I mean is the wired pieces underneath the pumpkin. I don't want that to be pronounced. I want it to be nice and smooth. So I'm just going to pull around and use my little clamps. This is the easiest way for me to do it. It holds everything in place. It kind of gives you an extra hand. And that is very important when you have small hands. Or maybe you have arthritis in your hands. This makes it easier too. We take our help where we can get it. And these are just little clamps that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to continue all the way around. I like to go on my flatter surfaces first and then work on the curves. And this is how it is going to look. And now all my little lines are together. I'm going to take my threaded needle and just go through underneath where the stem is and I am going to tie that in a triple knot. You can do a double knot, you can do a triple knot. The reason I'm tying it to the frame is because if you tried to put the loop through that very loose weave of the fabric of the pumpkin, it would just come right out. So if you tie it to the frame, it's going to stay exactly where it needs to be. You can trim off what's left to keep it nice and neat. And then I'm just going to go to the inside. You can see what I'm doing here. It's easier to just watch and just go over, move your thread out of the way. If you try to keep your head, your, if you're right handed and you're using the needle in the right hand, try to keep that thread under and around your left hand. And that'll keep it from getting tangled up um, around the other clips and things that are on your pumpkin. It took me a few little tries to get this right, but once I started doing it, I had my process down and it went pretty quickly. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just trying to keep it under my hand. And I'm just going to go back and forth. I'm doing about maybe like a half inch, moving over a half inch. And then when you get to the end, you can just make a couple of loops and knot it off trim it down and then if you've got further to go go ahead and do that entire process again looks nice doesn't it you can barely see it so you want to use whatever type of cord is going to match follow me on my social media and then once it is all done this is how it's going to look nice nice and smooth nothing is stretched too tight then I'm going to just, on the inside, like I said, I didn't cut it, so I'm just going to put some glue on there. You're going to please use a cool temperature so that it doesn't melt your fingers, burn your fingertips off. And then just pinch it together, hold it together, and then once that's down, you can add some hot glue or cool temp glue, whichever, underneath. And then hold it down, flip it over, and then you can just kind of cup your hand on the top 
and press your hand underneath onto your hand above and this is going to help hold it if you see on the right that's how it looks when it is complete and you won't see this part because you're not going to put this on a glass door it's not that type of a wreath it's going to go on a wall or something with a back on it so I'm just going to go around and, and continue to press down and add a little bit of glue any place it looks like it needs to be um, you know, stuck down and in place just to give it a nice profile once we flip it over. Now time to work on the floral part. I'm going to use a scrap of cardboard and a scrap of floral foam or foam, whatever you have. I'm going to add some glue here and I've just got it propped up on a box so you can see it. And I'm going to press these two together. It's going to kind of melt them together around the, the um, stem of the pumpkin. So here's my beautiful white sunflower that I've chosen to use. Mine were thrifted, but you can definitely get these at Dollar Tree. I'm just going to put these leaves right on the back of the flower. That was easy enough, right? Sorry, out of angle again. Out of camera angle. But you can see this is how it will look. Okay, so now I'm going to take some of these floral picks. They are um, a little sparse. They did come from Dollar Tree. To make them a little bit bulkier, a little thicker, I am going to just add two leaves from one branch to a branch that already has two leaves on it. Now we have four leaves on our branch. You see how it's got a little curve in it, and that's so it will face forward instead of outward. Yeah, I don't want it to face the sides. I want it to be kind of facing forward for this project. So here's another little branch. Beautiful. It's got the little berries on it. Same thing. Give it just a little bend. And then we're going to place it opposite on the bottom. Now I cut this flower stem. I should have cut it longer than that. But you'll see. I'll fix that later. No worries about that. I'll fix it later. Okay. So I'm going to take these little hydrangeas. I think these came from the Dollar Tree, but I've had them for a little while, so I can't recall for sure. But there's only a couple of little pieces on each stem. So to make those thicker, I'm going to put them in sets of three. I'm going to use my floral wire to just hold those together. You can use floral tape if you want. And then I'm going to put the entire set of three all in one place. Because hydrangeas are full, right? And I don't know why I am so loving hydrangeas this fall. I have done several projects already with fall colored hydrangeas and I'm, I'm loving them, loving them, loving them. All right, so now we're gonna go up. So we have the bottom right and the top left with the hydrangeas. And then I'm gonna start adding the little witch hazel pieces. These add so much interest and that blue with that orange is stunning. Do you like that? I mean, that's not. this is not typical for me. I don't usually do the blue, but this year, seeing that orange and that blue together is beautiful. So I've done a couple of things different. I'm learning. I'm going with the flow, y'all. Just, just a little bit here and there. Now, I'm not going crazy, but just a little bit. So you're going to continue to add in picks where you feel like you need them. I'm going to add my little flyaway pieces here, my little blue berries, uh, uh, the little blue seeds. Instead of using the yellow, I decided to add the blue just to put a little more blue. You can use whatever color you want, and those also came from Dollar Tree. These were not in with the seasonal stuff. They were in with the regular flowers, uh, in case you're looking for these. They look really pretty in this, don't they? So you're just going to add these here and there. And you see me struggling to find the little piece of foam back there. No problem. I just keep going with it. And you're going to add them wherever you feel like you need a little, little extra pizzazz. And then, of course, you don't want to leave the bottom open, so we're going to add one there. Kind of makes my flower a little squished up, doesn't it? If I would have left the stem longer, the flower would not be squished. So you just leave your stem a little bit longer. I want the flower there for now, though, because it helps give me placement of where I am going to put my pieces around it, because that's kind of the center stage of the arrangement part. Now we're going to make some little picks with our ribbons. So the orange ribbon and the blue and white ribbon came from Dollar Tree, and the cream colored burlap came from burlapfabric.com. So I am just going to cut these 
into pieces um, that are nine inches long and I'm going to do sets of three because we're gonna make three picks with three pieces of ribbon each. I'm gonna dovetail my ends. You can do slants if you prefer that. I would not recommend that you leave this type of ribbon without a cut because they will fray. This is like a satin type ribbon. It does have wire. They all have wire and that is very important when you're making these picks because we need to be able to style them or position them and have them hold their placement. So this is all we have to do to put these picks together. And this is easy, isn't it? You're gonna take a piece of jute, grab it, flip it over. I'm just kind of gathering with my fingers a little bit and you can do it this way if you want, but you don't have to. You can just cinch it up and then arrange them. Then I'm going to tie this. Then I'll kind of arrange a little bit to make sure that I fix the places that flip over. Give it a few knots. You could use floral wire here if you would prefer also. Now what I'm using for the pick is just little pieces of the branches where I have cut flowers off of picks before. So you know you always have the stems left. I save those because they're really good for using in projects. Now I'm going to add hot glue in the middle, put that little pick there and then tie it tightly down. This is going to give it a lot of security. And then it glue needs to be dry completely before you uh, try to place it in your arrangement. So this is why the wire is important. You see how it has uh, all that dimension in it? Some are raised above others. You've got little curves in the ends. If you didn't have wired ribbon, these would just flop around. Cute. So we're gonna do that three times and we'll have three of these beautiful little picks. So just like when I'm making a bow, I fluff the heck out of any ribbon I get. Um, if you watch me for any length of time, you know that. It's important and I love to do it. Love it, love it a lot. So now I'm just gonna start placing these in where again, I'm just kind of feeling like I want them to be. There's really no rhyme or reason to this. And I'm not putting these in a particular um, pattern or angle. I just like it over here. So this is where I'm gonna put it. And this is where my flower being sunk in needs to be removed. So I'm going to put the little witch hazel in that I pulled out when I pulled out my flower. And I'm just going to go ahead and add these picks in. Here and there, uh, a lot of people like to work in a triangular pattern. But in this particular situation, I did not do that. I just, again, put them where I felt like I needed them. Or where they would look nice. And I put one up here. Now I'm gonna add a longer stem onto my flower, my beautiful sunflower, and then place it back down on the inside. Now it sits above the rest of it and it's not sunk in. Doesn't that look better? Yes, that looks better. So I think we could do a little something extra here. Y'all, those colors are beautiful. Love them together. All right, so now I'm just gonna remove the hanger off of this little leaf. And we're gonna use it to make a bow to go on the top. And the bow is going to cover up the little hole. Okay, so you can put that wherever you would like, but let me show you how to make the bow first. You're just gonna wrap it over on itself because this has been cut. So now I have a little piece that I cut to go around the middle. I'm gonna trim it down. Add a little bit of hot glue here. And I'm gonna grab another floral pick and use that as an extra finger to push that down in place. And look at our little bow, cute. Now with a little bit of hot glue, I can put it right over the hole in the top of that leaf. And I am thankful that it fit nicely. Now we're gonna make a pick out of this leaf. So we're just gonna grab another little branch here and hot glue it down on the back and then decide where we wanna put it. And at first I was thinking I would put it on the left side, but then I thought, no, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the right. So I just pressed it down into the foam on the right. And this is how it looks. Okay, so if you're not liking this blue, what colors would you have used in this project?
many pumpkin wreaths. I did one also for Halloween last year, and we're going to be doing it again this year. So a Dollar Tree wreath, we're going to take some signs, we're going to take florals, whatever type matches the fabric that you get from Dollar Tree. I also have a little thrifted sign. Here's the fabric that I chose because it looks vintage to me. It looks old. And we're going to put it across the pumpkin. Just so you know, every piece of fabric that I've gotten from Dollar Tree fits on every pumpkin that I've gotten. So this must be the standard way that they cut the fabric, which makes it perfect for you because you can use it. So now the pumpkin is upside down. We're going to get some clamps and our finger protectors and, of course, some hot glue. This is the way I like to do it. I like to start in one space, kind of fold it over, and clip it first. You don't want to be going along thinking everything's great and then you run out of fabric and you have too much in one area because then you have to patch and that is just no fun and you can't craft efficiently when that happens. So let's just save ourselves the trouble and just go around here and put the clips on first, right? We like those tips that help us get the job done. So we're just clipping it down. I am not pulling it super tight. I don't want to bend the frame. I just want to make sure that there are no wrinkles or lines going down the front. So I'm just going to continue, continue along. I'm clipping these down and into place. If you don't have these clips from Dollar Tree, you can use um, like the clothesline wooden clips to hold it in place. I think those would probably work fine for you. After everything is clipped into place, you're just going to flip it back over and you are going to use hot glue underneath all of those little sections. You can put your clips back on until the glue is dry and then you're going to trim off all of your excess. Now for the top. This is going to be the little swag that goes on the top. There are a bunch of ways of doing this, but this is how I have discovered is both efficient and affordable. So I just use a thicker, like the stem from another floral and use it as a bottom piece, measure it across the top and you get about 10 inches. That will be the perfect size for these uh, pumpkin frames. So I've got some Dollar Tree leaves underneath and these are the little um, burlap ones underneath some thrifted black eucalyptus these fern pieces are from dollar tree the roses are thrifted but you can get them from dollar tree i mean don't typically use roses in my decor but it's the only black flowers i had so you know just kind of um decide what you like best um, dahlias would have been beautiful that would have been my choice but i'm trying to use what i have right now and uh because I encourage you to do the same thing. You don't need to just constantly buy and then not use your items. So I just try to make sure that I am keeping the center down when I add in my picks so that when I do clip these together, they'll all be in place. I'm gonna keep adding as you go along and I try to mimic or do opposite on the other side. So if I have, um, you can see what I'm doing here. I have the, um, Kind of see-through leaves on the bottom on the right and then on the left and then I have the solid ones on the top right and the bottom left you get what I'm saying so a black zip tie around the middle will hold these all together and I'm just trying to make sure nothing comes apart and then you can clip off that extra flip that little clippy part to the back and then you can add in whatever else you want to add in that has to be attached with glue I chose some random greenery that I had laying around and just put that on the back because you want to widen out the middle just a little bit now that you have the other pieces ready. I'm going to add some green in here because of the green fern that I have. You don't have to add the green. Um, nobody has to, to come for me about the green and the pumpkin stuff. You know, it's okay. I live in the south. We have green. We have green all year. So, um, go ahead and take that stem. We're going to add two pieces of cardboard and some glue in between so that we have a surface to put our little riser space. I'm going to use two little wooden blocks here. I think they came from Dollar Tree, but I'm not certain. Then you're going to glue those to the bottom. This is going to be the support that's going to hold up our swag. So put that right down on there. You can clamp this into place and let it hold. These are also clamps from Dollar Tree and these came from the laundry section. They will get the job done. 
once everything is dried and your glue has set up, you can start adding in more pieces wherever you feel like you need them. I'm gonna put a rose in the center. And then I decided to use this little cutie pie. But I didn't want the little bows, so I tore those off. Keep adding in your little willow pieces. You want some, some, I know as crafters we say depth and dimension all the time, but it's true. You want that. You want the things that look different. You want the things that look spooky if you're doing Halloween. You want it to look wild if you like, you know, cottagey or rustic. You want it to have interest, right? So you're going to keep adding these in where you need them. Add glue where you need it and just keep going around. I'm gonna take another one of those burlap leaves, fold it over, and then put it right in the top, right on the top of there. It almost gives it like a stem. A little glue on the inside of it, a little glue on the paper, and it will dry. And I'm gonna add some more of these. Love these. Uh, these, I got thrifted, but I think Dollar Tree has these. Am I right? Am I wrong? Have y'all seen those at Dollar Tree? They're really pretty. Just continue along and make it as thick as you like it. I have had people say that they don't like as much as I put in there, and that's okay. That's why my channel is called Making It My Own. You're going to do exactly what you like. Even if you don't like what I like, you know? Just do your own thing. I encourage you to do that. That's what I want you to do. You don't have to copy what I do. So going right over the, or the framework that's underneath, I've added a good bit of hot glue and then pressed down my cute little ghosts right there once it's dry you can pick it up and move it around and look at it add remove whatever you feel like you want to do love them so much just to break up the black I've decided to add a couple of more pieces of green in there you can use um, little flowers here if you wanted you can use whatever you want you could use some of those little picks with the balls, little fluffy things, whatever you choose. So for a hanger, I'm just using half of a Chanel stem. I'm going to put it right here, add a little bit of hot glue, and then a piece of scrap ribbon, and that is going to hold it in place for you. Perfectly. I guess you could call it a wreath. So we're gonna take this Dollar Tree wreath form. And mine came from Goodwill, of course. You can see it's already been used, it's kind of sad looking, but I'll fix it up. I'm gonna use a piece of fabric that I thrifted, and this is a faux leather. You can use an old purse, you can use an old jacket, maybe you got an old skirt, an old pillow. Now I've got some of these fall colored eucalyptus leaves and these beautiful oak leaves. And then I have some dried looking hydrangeas in brown and cream and this really pretty peachy color. Perfect for fall. I'm going to cut this one off and I'm gonna hang on to my stem. I'm gonna use that in a minute. These are some berry picks from Dollar Tree. Alrighty, so I'm gonna start off by making sure that I have enough piece, uh, I have a wide enough piece and long enough piece for the form. I'm going to get my finger protectives and my clamps. Now I'm silly. You see I already have my finger protectors on. You don't need them at this point. I, I have no idea what I was thinking when I did this. I was just so excited when I had the idea to do it because I have never seen one. I really wanted to share it so I went a little bit nuts. I was kind of rushing through it, you know, going with the flow. But you get the drift. You won't need your finger protectors yet. So you're going to start taking your little clamps. These came from the Dollar Tree. I believe they're six in a pack. And I went ahead and, and I just have two packs because I use these all the time. And I'm going to just kind of stretch this over the frame and clamp it off where um, I need it. Where I think I'm going to need to glue it down. So just making sure that it's enough to cover completely over. And start laying it out exactly where it's going to be when I start putting the glue down to hold this to the frame. Continuing around, this is not a, like a stretchy fabric, so you just kind of pleat it where you need to, and you can flip it to the front and make sure, you know, that everything is where it needs to be. 
if you pull too tightly on your fabric across these forms it will kind of deform the shape of it so just keep that in mind I'm just gonna continue around Whoop, they want a fingertip until you get all the way around and I wanted to leave this in so you could see exactly how you're gonna be doing it okay see this is why we don't glue it first this is why we place our clips look at it and then go back look at the front and fix all the little areas where we need to retuck and fix the little pleated areas you want everything to look nice and neat then once you get it in place you can start adding your glue put your glue gun on cool do not use hot temperature or it's going to drip off of your wreath form rather than clinging to it so that you can glue this down so keep it on cool put your finger protectives on uh, protectors on and then begin to place this down just remove one clip at a time just kind of uh, lightly pull and then press down and clip it in place same thing here remove a clip gonna go along see how it clings to that that's exactly what you want pull it over you can kind of roll it down and that way it the glue is going to get the fabric on both sides it's going to catch the front side and the back side and it will make a little tunnel like across your pieces of wire if that makes sense I hope that makes sense this is just going to give it more security this way and you don't have to worry about it popping off I do recommend that you use something like a Gorilla Glue here just to be on the safe side because you do put just a little bit of tension on the fabric and you don't want anything to come unglued. I also do not recommend that you put this outside because it is a fabric and it, if you live in a humid hot climate like I do, it may cause the glue to melt and the fabric to um, possibly mildew and that would be just yuck. So this is an arrangement that you would probably want to just keep on the inside of your house okay so we're going to continue along just like this left this in there for um, you guys and gals who asked that I not do everything in high speed you wanted to see exactly what was going on so I'm gonna leave this in here for you I'm not concerned about the extra fabric I do not want to cut it off at this point we're just gonna glue down all the way around until we're back to our starting point so who is having fall weather we're not having any of course it's still summertime here but I'm looking forward to it oh it's been so hot so so hot in southern Alabama what's your weather like today is it nice do you have rain I love a rainy day but I do not like the humidity that comes afterwards not at all okay so we're almost all the way around we're almost done here Keep going and you can see if you look all the way around that the fabric is cupped all the way around now you can very easily take your scissors very sharp scissors of course and be careful and then go along the ends of those clips and you can trim off anything that you don't need if you leave your clips in place this will ensure that you do not cut it too short see there nice very nice and then when you're sure that everything is cool you can just take all of your clips off and then we'll flip it over and I'll show you what it looks like oh my goodness I love this now I know Dot Dollar Tree has some um, they have some panels of leather there but I don't think they're big enough okay so I took that stem and I'm just using it to kind of I'm gonna use it as a base to put our swag on top of the pumpkin but you can use it's about a foot long so whatever you have you know if you've got um, a stick or something that you want to use you can certainly use that or if your hydrangeas have long stems you can just leave them long and then just wrap them around each other and that would be fine too but this gives me an idea of how big I want my swag to be on the top of the pumpkin so I get my proportions right so I'm just gonna put the dark on the edges and I'm going to move them down a little bit place the lighter ones on the inside these are so pretty these came from the thrift store but I can tell you right now that I have seen these at Hobby Lobby so there's no telling what they originally cost and then I'll put that peachy color one right in the middle I'm just gonna flip it over so I remember where everything is and I'm gonna use my zip ties to put this together 
If you don't have zip ties, that's not a problem. You can just use your wires for this. You can use some jute cord if you need to use it. If you have bread ties, you can use those. You know, just be creative, use what you have. If you don't have any of that stuff, you could always use some twine. And then this is how we're gonna put it together. I have white and black ties and mine came from the Dollar Tree and they're in the automotive section. So they have a shorter one like I'm using now and they have some really long ones. But this is a good size, um, in my opinion, for doing the crafts that, that I do here on this channel. They are suiting all of my needs. So you can see here, I'm just kind of overlapping the stems and just going over across that um, the stick there or that long stem that we had cut down. Sometimes I put the zip ties on backwards when I get in a hurry and I have to flip them around. Okay. So I can use my, um, just pull those down because the zip ties don't, don't keep anything like where you can't move them. Like if you hot glued them, you wouldn't be able to slide them around. So using these zip ties will allow me a little more of an opportunity to kind of uh, arrange them a little bit better, you know, move them around. Then I'm gonna go across the middle to lock that one in the center. Okay, so this is essentially going to be what I would call the base of my swag because this is our starting point. This is our jumping off point and then we're going to add and embellish to this. So these beautiful leaves, I know for a fact, came from um, Hobby Lobby because I saw somebody do a walkthrough and I saw these leaves, but mine came from the thrift store. I was so blessed to find these. I could not believe it. And I just knew when I saw them, they would be perfect for this leather pumpkin because they kind of have that leathery look, don't they? And that beautiful, rich brown, so pretty. So you're gonna get some options here. I'm gonna show you, if you wanted to do three like this and not have a stem on your pumpkin, this is how you would do it. And for me, I'm just gonna trim it down and poke it up there in the top. Once you get so many in there, they'll kind of lock together. All those little branches will lock together like when you use a grapevine wreath and you don't have to use glue, they kind of stick. You can definitely reinforce it with some glue if you want, but at this point, I wasn't exactly sure where I was going with this swag. And I do end up changing it in the end, but I wanna give you some options. So if you like it this way, feel free to do it this way. And I only use three of those little branches of the, the greenery there. I'm going to pull my eucalyptus picks apart. These are gorgeous. Dollar Tree has some really pretty eucalyptus already out for fall too. So you can look and find all colors. I, I found like a purplish, um, I don't know, more of like a maroon kind of color, the green, I've seen brown. There's a lot of different colors. And of course the green, you know, depending on what color um, scheme that you like. But I love the richness of this with the leather pumpkin. So I kind of, it just feels cohesive to me. I mean, what do you think? I think it looks pretty good. All the colors are meshing well together. Nothing is really jumping out at you. It just looks, it looks nice. Again, I'm tucking those in, but if you know exactly where you want your items to be, you can go ahead and glue them. I just like to kind of get an idea before I glue anything down. Because then it's harder to fix. I mean, you can fix it, but it's a little harder and a little messier. So this is kind of what the swag is going to look like on top of the pumpkin, if you like it like this. And I'm just going to put it across the pumpkin, and I love the scale of it. I think it's perfect for the top. This is how it looks with that third stem right in the middle. But I decide I wanna try something else. So I'll show you in a minute what that's gonna be. I'm gonna go ahead and take those picks and put them randomly here and there. And I left my, I didn't edit out where I move things around because I want you to see that I do that too. I don't always put stuff down in one spot and it's perfect and that's where I leave it. No, that is not true, that is called editing. I try to leave it out um, to keep the videos at us, you know, where it's, you can get under 30 minutes of viewing time, right? So I have to cut some things out, but I want you to know that I'm not perfect either, and I do move things around too. So I'm going to use my zip tie and go right through the, 
stem of that wire pumpkin and zip it on tightly. And you can see everything staying in there and that's not even glued yet, so it's pretty good. So this is how it's gonna look so far. I love it. What do you think about the leather pumpkin? So pretty. So this is where I'm showing you, I'll leave everything in. I'm going to move some things around, pull some things out, fluff some things up. I'm gonna remove those little picks that are hanging off the sides and I'm gonna place them a little bit lower. And don't you think that looks better? I think the proportion of it is much better in that area. Then I can go ahead and glue it down because I know that's exactly where I want it. It's kind of hard when you're working on a swag and it's not connected to the piece to really know how it's gonna blend and fit. So I like to do it this way. Whatever feels right to you is exactly how you need to do yours. Just be inspired and do what you want. Now I just ran out in the driveway and grabbed up a stem. This little piece of a limb or branch um, was where we had a tree cut down and it was just left behind and I grabbed it up and thought it would be perfect for this pumpkin and I zip tied it on. So now we have a little stem in the top and it's a natural looking stem. You could definitely use something bigger, something smaller. You could leave it off or you could use that little um, extra leaf pick in the top if you prefer your. Going to start with the wreath form that comes from Dollar Tree, but I believe you can get it other places. This is the one that's dimensional, it's not flat. We're going to take some picks, and my choice is going to be black and orange, and I think I add some yellow later to match the candy corn. Little burlap leaf came from Dollar Tree, the little wispy piece came from Dollar Tree, and this fabric came from Dollar Tree. Can you believe it? And it's the perfect size for this form. All right, so we're gonna start by covering our form with this black fabric. Of course, we wanna remove our tag and then watch how perfectly this piece of fabric fits with this form. I could not believe it when I tried it. Yes. So you can pick any color of that seasonal fabric that you can find at Dollar Tree or you can use the solid felt fabric, whatever you can find. You can even use an old shirt, an old skirt, an old blanket or sheet, whatever you like. So I'm just clipping this and then flipping it over so I can see where I'm going to be needing my glue. I don't have um, arms like an octopus, which would be ideal for this because I could hold everything at one time while I'm gluing, but since I can't, these clips work great and they came from Dollar Tree. They got little silicone tips on them so they grip really nicely for these projects. All I'm doing is going around the edge and just kind of laying it out where I know I want it to be. Just like this. And then we'll trim off that excess in a bit. But for now, I'm just gonna put it where I know I want it to be and then we're gonna work with one section at a time. So I'm gonna unclip the section on the side first using my cool temperature setting on my gun because you do not want this to run off of that wire. If you use a high temp, it's gonna fall off the wire. We don't want that to happen. We need a little time to be able to adjust that fabric to fold it over the edge. So you having that cooler temperature glue is gonna work better for that. Then I'm gonna go to the other side and then attach that side down. See how that bead sits right on top? That's perfect, that's what we want. I'm not gonna stretch it too hard because if you stretch too hard, these uh, frames will bend and I don't want to change the shape of this pumpkin. So I'm just gonna follow the natural form and wrap around the edges. I'm gonna continue to do that all the way around this pumpkin. I'm gonna do a little bit at a time. So I've done both sides. Now I'm gonna go to the bottom and you get the idea here folding it over, squeezing it down so that the glue goes on both pieces of fabric and on the wire form. So we're gonna continue around like this. 
I wanted to let y'all know guys this is a little hidden giveaway I'm having a 5,000 subscriber giveaway so if you haven't subscribed be sure that you do that I'll be giving you more details later on that but I can tell you that the giveaway is going to be a box full of goodies things that I have thrifted for crafting things that I've picked up from Dollar Tree extras um, there'll be ribbons probably transfers in there maybe fabric tools paints all kinds of things so when we get to 5,000 subscribers we're gonna have a giveaway stay tuned so you'll know what to do okay so when we get up to the stem and we've gotten everything else glued down I'm just going to clip there around the stem so that I can trim off everything and still have a little bit on the top to work with we're gonna do that in just a second Sharp scissors really do help. I've heard that you can sharpen your scissors by cutting on a piece of sandpaper or cutting on aluminum foil. Now, do your own investigating to see. I don't want anybody to ruin their good scissors, but I have used it on sandpaper before on my scissors and it works great. So try that at your own risk. All right, so just around the top here, now I have this little flap for the top of my pumpkin. It isn't the perfect fit. But it'll work for what I need. I'm just going to fold it over. You can see I'm a little bit out of camera range and I apologize for that. I think I've gotten much better. If you've watched my videos from the beginning, I've gotten much better about trying to stay where you can see me. But you know, sometimes in the heat of the moment, things happen. All right, now well, there's a bunch of different types of ribbons that you can use. Whatever you want to use to trim yours out, you can. I just tried a few different types. I like this particular ribbon because it's wide enough that I can put glue on it and put it right down the center of those wire pieces without any glue coming out the sides. If you use a very thin strip, you might have an issue with glue um, seeping through. And I'm, I'm always striving to make a high-end look, and I want to show you how to do um, those little extra things to give you a high-end look. So we're going to stop, start at the top, right beside the stem on that first ring, and you can almost see through the fabric here so you can see it. Um, you just want to lay that down and add a little bit of glue as you go. You don't have to put a whole string of glue there unless you just want. I found that with the cooler temperatures, when you put a dot and then pull down to another dot, you pretty much get a little stream anyway. It's just like a little string, but it's plenty to hold that ribbon in place. Then nothing will show through. There'll be no bulk from the glue underneath, and you'll get a nice smooth appearance, and that's what we want. So we're going to go down just like this going to flip it over, add some glue on the underneath section, and then press it down. And then trim off right there. So the ends are on the back side, and it's nice and smooth. Then to show you again, we're going to start here, a little bit of glue, press it down and squeeze it to the back. Some of the glue goes to the back of the form. You can see little, little string, little spider web of glue between the dots, and that's perfect for this. Going to add some glue here, flip it over, a little dot of glue on the back, squeeze it down, and trim it off. Be sure you use those clamps when you need them. All right, this is it when it's completely finished on the base of the pumpkin. Now we're going to use a little bit of this burlap. Use whatever you have. This really doesn't show too much in the end with the design that I use, but whatever you decide you want to use, you could wrap with ribbon or burlap or jute. Um, or leave it just like it is, whichever way you want to do it. But I like this black burlap, so I'm going to add this to the top. And it's this particular burlap, I'm just going to be honest, I can't remember where I got it from, but it is ridiculous to work with. It is really, it's, it's, I can't, I can't. So it's best that I use it up, right? Why not use it on a place where it really doesn't show that much? It frays, it comes apart, and it has that white backing um, I just, I can't. Anywho, moving along. So now we're going to make a little swag for the top. And here we have this nice and glittery pick from Dollar Tree. I think it's called Willow, I'm not sure. But they have these in a couple of different colors this year. And I'm going to take my thrifted oak picks and just lay those around to see where I want them to be. And you can see that I've left an open spot in the middle and then we have similar sides. I'm going to say similar. They're definitely not identical and I'm not trying to make them identical. Using a black zip tie, which also came from the Dollar Tree. 
I'm going to cinch those down really tightly. I do, by the way, glue that leaf back on and decide where I want to put it. Look at this. Ugh, the fallout. It's horrific. Ah! Okay. Now, you've seen me make this. If you've seen uh, my last, let's see, which video did I do where I made all these little things? Oh, yes. It was a Halloween, vintage Halloween video. I'm going to take this and wrap it 20 times around my hand. These are pieces of raffia, a black. If I'd had a white, I would have added that in there, but I did not have any white. I'm not even sure they make white. Tie it in the center right here with some jute and a double knot. Trim it off. I'm going to press it down so that I can see where the center would be, and I'm going to cut right through that center there. This is similar to what you would do with making a tassel, but we're not going to make a tassel. This is going to almost be like a flower or a little pile of hay or straw. It's just really cute looking to me, and it looks rustic, and it reminds me of, I think I've said it before, but it just reminds me of something carnival-like. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to wrap that around. It's convenient to have that jute long enough that you can use it to tie. And I don't cut that stuff off until the end. That way I can use it if I need to. I'm going to fluff it out a little bit. It's a nice little filler. I think it gives some great color there amongst all the black. Okay, now I'm going to take this burlap leaf. I think this is a maple leaf. Really doesn't matter. It's orange and it looks good here. It's going to break up some of that black. I'm going to press it in with that long little wire piece on the back and then just kind of fluff that other stuff over the top. I've got a variety of gold and yellow flowers here. I also have an orange flower that you'll see in a second. These two branches are thrifted and they are identical. So I'm going to pull the same branch off with a, some, hmm, the same little pick part off of each branch. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, they're identical. And I'm going to put one on each side. And then fluff it around a little bit to get it where I want it. Um, I didn't have to use glue because this fits right down in the other stems from the other picks which makes it great, but feel free if you're going to hang it outside where it might get some wind and weather that you would, you know, go ahead and use a little hot glue there, but I don't need it for that because it's going to be indoors. Look at this beautiful orange thrifted flower. Love it. Rather than shoving that down in that pick, which is already pretty tight, I'm just going to use a little hot glue on the back, and this is still my cool temp. I'm enjoying using the cool temp, actually. And then I'm going to put my flower right down in there. I'm just going to press it down for a minute until that glue has a chance to sit up. So now we have a beautiful floral spray for the top of our pumpkin. Love it. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Okay, so I'm going to take that jute. I'm going to wrap it around that wire frame and then tie it off. Just like that. Trim it down and then a little hot glue to keep that knot from slipping. Once it's cool, you can flip it over so you don't glue it to your table. And I need a hanger. So right in the top, there's a piece of the wire that is still um, easy to expose underneath the burlap. So I just press it down a little bit and then wrap a piece of that coordinating ribbon, the same ribbon, to make a hanger. Just like that. And I'm going to cut this at a slant because I want the knot to be at the top. I like, I like the look of that. So that's what we got so far. But we have one more thing we're going to add. But you can stop there if you'd like. Okay. So the icing on the cake. Dollar Tree has these cute little signs. I was lucky enough to get two packs. And they're different. The signs are shaped differently. It's going to fit nicely on the sign, I think. So I'm going to just take my little tie here, go right underneath my swag, and then attach it down, and then trim it off. It's hanging from a wire, so you really could adjust that up to make it shorter or down to make it longer. But I love the look of this. What do you think?